Well, I I came to see you people. <laughs> okay. okay, so I came here on an official visit. Mm. So I'm brand ambassador of ICT University. Mm. And yes, we were having our um, seventh commencement ceremony. And I was meant to come in an official capacity, mm. which I did. And yes, everything is over now. And I'm... I'm here to pay a visit. I mean, this has been home, right? But I've been connecting through Skype, just like you said earlier. And I thought, how about get into into studio and see Mr. Kum live and joy? And here we are. Yeah. <laughs> how has it been since you came? Um, so far, so good. Mm. I I say words will fail me, mm. trying to express how how much um, honor that's the word I've had. I mean. Social media, you saw everything that happened in the media. I, I literally had a triumphant entry into Cameroon, mm -hmm. which I'm, I'm, I, I was taken aback. I'm yet to digest all of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, the ceremony, the event was awesome. It was mm -hmm. spectacular. We had more than how many thousand? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Loads of people at the Congress Hall. Um, and I was privileged to have an award as well. Mm -hmm. And I've been eating a lot of plums and plantain and groundnuts mm. <laughs> those are the things that i was craving for and i've had loads of it so yeah it's it's so far so good i've i've, I've been privileged to see my childhood friends um family that i've not seen for over eight years now so i mean what better thing could i ask i mean and i've been privileged to see you <laughs> the singer yes mr Kuhn. Can you compare or contrast the picture of you when you left Cameroon um, and you coming back eight years after? Um, what has happened? A miracle, the hand of God, hard work? Tell us. Uh, so, yeah, like I said, words will fail me. But let me attempt it. Mm -hmm. I left, I left um, 2010. Mm -hmm. um, I went for studies. And after my MBA, I had to get back home, you know. I did, I spent just about a year or so mm -hmm. in Cameroon and I traveled back. So yeah, it's been roughly eight or thereabout. Mm -hmm. And I traveled back. At that time, I was very young. I mean, I'd had MBA, so you, you, I mean, you know what is expected of an MBA student. However, you understand that I was a bit naive, very naive okay. with a lot of things, mm -hmm. you know. I'd, Traveled abroad, but the Cameroonianness and every other thing about that was still in me. I had not really touched base, I would say. It was more of going to school, having a job, and then get home and all of that. That usual routine. Mm -hmm. I didn't get to integrate into the community like that. So the next time I went, that's eight years ago, I mean, a lot happened as well. Mm -hmm. And that is in terms of personal stuff. But in terms of maybe career-wise, mm -hmm. there's nothing that I can compare with the past. So from the past eight years, last lap, what's happening now and eight years and back, man, it's, it's, it's a different Delhi, I would say, completely different. I said to my supporters, Delhi's matchups, um, for, uh, delicious, and anybody who cared to, to listen, that god has literally just taken me from one place bounce and then sent to one skyrocketed that's the, the word i've been skyrocketed to another level what's really failed me like you can see and yeah i would imagine uh delhi living cameroon eight years ago um i'm not sure many persons just your family knew that you were uh, going back uh, to the uk but coming back today and it's the entire nation that is talking about you are coming back you are fans and a host of others and you say god but tell what what, what is it that you did to have gotten to where you are now um i've been consistent okay. with with my purpose mm -hmm. yeah that that's it so when i say god you know i will always say god mm -hmm. because he's, he's the center of my life mm -hmm. now there's god there's there's conviction there's consist consistency of mm -hmm. that conviction yeah yeah and i've done that all through and i'm not stopping anytime soon now it is the many lives that i would say that my conviction and my purpose has been able to touch it is the many people whose lives have been transformed it is the many people who have had 
uh, who have been inspired, who have had renewed enthusiasm about themselves, who have been able to discover their purposes. Mm -hmm. It is these many people, that's the difference, that has, that's, that's what exactly has happened. So yes, eight years back, nine, ten years, I, didn't, I wasn't talking to so many people, I was not doing as much. Eight years, God has used me. You were not missing the Eric Tringes, the, the Sharon Dungus, the Professor Barikas, the these guys, yes. I wasn't. Mm -hmm. I would say that, and I was doing work though, because if you look at, before I, when I traveled back to when I had, when I was done with my studies, mm -hmm. I went back, I was into philanthropic works. I was doing all of that. But the media, most people didn't know me. Because like I always say, my, my primary purpose is philanthropy. Mm -hmm. And I take care of orphans and I'm the privileged, the disadvantaged prisoners, widows. You know, I do take care. And I, I, I was doing that. Mm -hmm. But it was, well, I would say, maybe nothing to write home about. I mean, as per the people. And yeah, I wasn't meeting with those people because most of the work was done behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And I guess that was the, the process. You see, so yeah, God did a lot of work behind the scenes, and then He showcased me to the world when I think it was His time. Yeah. You uh, you live in the UK, eh? uh, just to note that she's not in Cameroon. She's a bush follower. <laughs> no, I live in Douala. <laughs> who just came in? Tell me about life out there. So many persons are following bush, bush today. Mm -hmm. Lots and lots are going to Canada. Lots are coming to the UK where you live, and others are going to the United States of America. Uh, how is life out there? Life out there is beautiful. One mm. word, it's beautiful. Mm. Now, the, like, just like the rose, there mm. are thorns. Okay. It's a beautiful flower, like rose and thorns, yeah. Mm. But we can only describe it as a beautiful flower, regardless of the thorns. Mm. Now, the difference is the system. Okay. okay they are so structured that we do the same thing and have different results more like you go to school you work i go to school maybe another person of there goes to school and works as well mm -hmm. but then our results are quite different there's so so much contrast life is actually beautiful i would say again understanding the context of what i say beautiful um, because when you work, you see what you're, you're working, you know, when it is, it is so structured that, I mean, it's so principled that mm. you don't need anybody to police you to do anything right. Okay. Yeah. You know that there are repercussions to whatever action you're going to be taking, whatever the case you see. So for instance, I'm standing, I just came back. So I was standing in front of the, the guest house that I was, by the way, Gajo. Mm -hmm. um, I'm brand ambassador of Gajo, so I was hosted by my boss and I stood outside and I watched this young man walk down the street and I'm watching his actually with oranges and his sock in and guess what the next thing he just drops the peelings there I was really taken aback now this is a life that I've lived mm -hmm. but of course there's been a mind shift yeah it's there's there's been that mind shift and I'm looking at I literally wanted to call him back like pick, please pick that like it doesn't make sense okay. there should be a bin for this the, 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 the one, uh, we're talking about a life out there we've seen a wave of uh, I don't know whether it's suicide case, uh, cases in the United States of America right and lots of divorce uh, rates out there right I see that people who actually live under pressure pressure uh, imposed on them by the the diaspora community or by themselves or their families or what's happening so these are the thorns i'm talking about okay you see what i mean yeah so that is a beautiful world the system is quite structured mm. but again when we talk about principles you understand that there are repercussions to whatever decision mm. you're making mm -hmm. and like i said you don't need to be put to be police to do the right thing whatever you know that garbage in garbage out you see what i mean now these people obviously like i said there's a system remember these countries are capitalist economies mm -hmm. and the, the major characteristic or i would say the common de denominator of these countries is money 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 so money is a god mm -hmm. people work money you work you're leaving doing a night a long shift 12 and you're resting and you take another so 
people everybody loves money right mm -hmm. money is a defense money is all of those beautiful stuff but hey i always i always describe money as money is a good servant but a bad master so mm -hmm. if it masters you so the thing is the tendency is most of us who have lived in this part of the world then we go out there talk of cameroon then go now there i always say part of the world now i mean cameroon mm -hmm. and then you go there you may be earning an, a meager salary of about fifty thousand a month and then you can manage that guess what that person with that salary suddenly and there's a suddenly gets out there and starts earning a million or two million a month and that is just maybe on an average mm. you think about it you need you need a lot of um, grace to be able to contain yourself and not be puffed up now women of course like i said africa is a different setup understanding that because we're a different setup and we have our tradition and all of that our culture women are not it's not a lot of african women who are billionaires like that okay. but you think millionaires like that when you go out there you automatically become a millionaire you know as per cameroon standard mm -hmm. you see what i mean and then these women are thinking why do i have to sit at home and take care of kids when i can make millions or more millions in a month now these african men who have been brought up to be the leaders in their homes can hardly take it because why the society favors more of the women now this is how it is we have um disabled kids mm -hmm. come first then we have kids mm -hmm. come second so normal kids without disability and then we have animals and then we have no we have women then we have animals we have maybe plants and before men now that's that's the order you think about it so women have so much power out there now the african men especially can hardly take this because first of all because of their huge ego and secondly because their positions have been usurped by the women and i put this quote unquote and you understand that system now this is what happens a woman uh, who had a beautiful marriage in africa submissive to the husband suddenly becomes the boss she can call the police at any time she can do whatever she wants to do and the man is kicked out because think about it if a woman calls the police on you a man guess what the police has have the police have no questions to ask you so, you don't so have you to yes you are immediately taken out of the house pending when they will resolve whatever is happening so her words are taken like she said them and that's it so the men get frustrated and then they start taking out bullets like they cannot handle it think about it a man has worked all his life in the uk or america and at the end of the day he's like 50 at 50 you want to start resting you're thinking of you know pension and the rest you start you want to start resting and then your entire family is taken from you your kids are taken away from you now this woman who is so wealthy is with another man mm. in maybe your house because they give the house to the woman because of course she is the most more likely to take care of the kids now you think about it and guess what you still have to pay child support and you still have to pay all of those things most of the men get frustrated there's such a thing i always say and i've said this so many times women have a biological clock but men have a financial clock i'm meant to be looking at the camera i'm looking at you women have a biological clock men have a financial clock mm -hmm. there's a time when a woman is reaching 40 and above she is already concerned because of course biology happens to her mm -hmm. and now she's she gets desperate and she wants to have kids at all costs but that doesn't happen to a man except for exceptional cases the reverse is true even if I we get to 40 and we're not very financially stable, we are not very, it's not a problem to us. Mm -hmm. The clock, financial clock is not ticking. You see what I mean? But it is for a man. When a man is approaching 40 and his source of income is not very defined, it becomes an issue. Now you think about it after getting to 50, 55, 60, and everything you've, you've worked for is taken from you. You start thinking, when, how do I start from scratch? You see what I mean? It's just like a woman. That translates to a woman who has gotten to 50 years or 40 and her babies or her children die. She starts thinking, where do I start from? Even if I have a man now, it's going to take me all of these. Matter of fact, uh, 
a miracle to have kids. Okay. Yeah. Um, Ba Oliver, good uh, afternoon to you, Elvido Chairman uh, Gladys Bo, and uh, fans of Drico Best and Soyanga. Okay. Hans Aja, good afternoon to all of you watching us uh, you through our Facebook uh, handle. Mm -hmm. uh, Delhi, we are talking about the diaspora. Right. And that um, there is pressure on the woman. Yeah. There's also pressure on the man. Yeah. Uh, but so many persons are moving here. Eh? What does it tell of Africa? Is it a oh. sign of failure? Remember that uh, when you listen to the guy who took over power in Niger, he tells you that he's asking why Nigerians are moving, dying in the Sahara and Mediterranean when, when uh, they, they, are have, they are very when rich. When you listen to the, the guy of Burkina Faso, in Russia, he asked the same question. Right. Our leadership, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure how I would get it. This particular author who says everything rises and falls on leadership. Okay. Yeah. We have all of these resources. You and I cannot just wake up and go and start mining somewhere right now. Mm -hmm. There's a process and there are people who are in charge of that. What are these people who are in charge of, who are, of course, our leaders doing about it? Mm -hmm. I mean, the youths have gotten so frustrated to the point where, you know, they want to see greener pastures. We have green here. They're going out there to see, 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 see greener. That's mm -hmm. what we state. Or I would say that they don't even know we have the greener pasture. Okay, we have a greener. Mm. They're going out there to seek green. Now, this is what happens. You come out of school. You know, I've been in the system, so I know what it, what it is. Come out of school, best student, best this and best that. And you go f get into an office to get a job. What happens? They need work experience, Mr. Mm. Cook. Mm. I'm just coming out of school. Where do you expect me to get experience from? And I understand the place of the employer asking for the experience. But let's think about it. So voluntary services, which is the thing, and I always say that's a scam to me. Why? Not because they do not, should not do voluntary services. I believe that every service should be compensated. Mm -hmm. Now, that is where most students would maybe get to learn one or two things. Mm -hmm. But you think about it. In a period of maybe one year, six months or thereabout, a student has to rely on a very meager sum for transport. They have to take care of themselves and all of that. It gets frustrating. It really does. It's a lot about our system. Now, let's even look at our curriculum. What we teach, what we get as students, mm -hmm. Cameroon curriculum, it teaches us to write exams. We prepare us to write exams and pass. And I always say Cameroonians are one of the, Cameroon is one of the most educated nations in the world literally now you think about it like the average cameroonian is, is educated mm -hmm. but guess what what we taught in school doesn't prepare us for the practical world out there it doesn't so you get out there and what i face cultural shock you're so shocked with so many things like as basic as writing a motivation le motivational letter a student out of university cannot do that but guess what these children this is the things they do practicality Writing a CV, you're being taught about that. Mm -hmm. You're being taught how to do it. So the, act, the, the, the actions that will match the theory that they've been taught in school. But no, we are all about theory, theory, and more theory. So you see, it's, it's, it's all of these things that contribute. So when I talk about the leaders, the system, because that it wants are to you, make are you, are, you, are you worried uh, when you look at what's happening? Almost a young Cameroonian today wants to. I'm, I'm worried. Mm. I, I am sick to my bones when I see it. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I am worried because that's literally brain drain. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's brain drain. And they are, we are, we are, we are, we are, we are transferring all of this wealth to another man's land, impacting them. In fact, we are the ones, we are literally the ones making Europe as mm. beautiful as it is. Because mm. cheap labor. All of those things, imagine that we had to invest all of this labor in our country. Imagine that we had to do, use all of the resources that we have available. Imagine that our curriculum is, is tweaked. And uh, Professor Pondi said this, that it's about time we, our education is tailored towards um, handling the needs of Africans. Mm -hmm. More like we have these solutions and we can pro uh, problems and we can propose solutions to these problems that we're having. We don't need to seek external help. We do not need to take loans and more loans. I heard the talking about Cameroon asking for more loans from China. And you can begin to 
do you know how much we owe as a nation? <laughs> You're part of that debt. I hope you know that. Yeah, you have to pay. <laughs> it has to come from your salary. Mm -hmm. You know that. And we're asking for even more. But guess what? We are very much capable because we have the resources. We are endowed enough, enough to handle every one of whatever we need. So, yeah, these are, these are the, the concerns. And when we travel out there, except it takes somebody in purpose, like myself, who is interested again to come back to Cameroon and invest, okay, everything that I've learned out there. But so many people get comfortable. It's all about them, their immediate family, and whatever you people want to do with the Cameroon, you might as well go ahead and do it. So, yeah, that's a level at which most, most youths have gotten. Yes, I've listened uh, several to the likes of uh, Roland uh, Quimen, who, who have uh, who are concerned about the ABC syndrome. I don't know whether you know about it. Um, the accuse, blame, and, and criticize. Yeah. Accuse, blame, and complain. Yeah. The syndrome. Yeah. Is that actually a problem too to us? Is it a very, 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 very current with our lifestyles as Cameroonians and Africans? As yeah, yeah, it is. I say that now, that, that to me, the major issue we have is a problem of leadership. Mm -hmm. Now, Cameroonians, especially the youths, have become so... They've gotten to the level where they're frustrated. Okay. Now, of course, like I said, I was part of the system as well. But I said to myself, I'm not going to be limited to that. Mm -hmm. I accuse you, said, blame and complain. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be doing that. Like somebody asked the question, it's not just about what your country is doing for you. What are you doing for your country? Mm -hmm. And I think that most people who accuse, blame and complain, they have hardly discovered their purpose. Because a man in purpose will go all out, more like, my, more like your sacrifice. You go all out to, to, to filling the blank spaces where the government could not mm -hmm. fill for you. You see what I mean? And that is it. So if people have this mindset, like I said, there's a mind shift, literally. When you travel out and you realize that things could be done by you and not necessarily just about the government. But hey, I insist on leadership this time around because I always talk to the youth and I say you can do much more than just expecting from the government. Mm -hmm. I insist on the leadership because it's only how much, when your hands are being tied, it's only how much you can, you know, you can fly, mm -hmm. you see. So if the government ties the hands through the different sectors and in the different sectors, it's only how much the youth too will fly. And of course they're copying from what they are seeing, mm -hmm. you see. So you talking about this kind of education that we have, it is just like somebody who is limping when you're facing with international, other international students. Mm -hmm. You can hardly handle a conversation as, as regards a particular topic, you know, not to talk of the practical side, mm -hmm. even of it. So you think about it as much as, more like we, like I said, we have, we are limping as much as the yeah, government but, but, has put but, those yeah, things. But, but, but if, if you cannot stand the international competition or uh, whatever, but how much investment do we uh, put in acquiring skills and knowledge so that we get ourselves uh, better for any challenge? I talked about purpose. Does mm -hmm. that, that when it skills, all the skills and 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 the gifts that you have if you if you want we want to talk about that you realize if i have to harness all of the the, the gifts and and talents that god has given me it would obviously be, be pointing towards my purpose and i that's what i said about the youths i've realized that most youths are only interested in most keyword only interested in having money, making money, doing all of that. Mm -hmm. So doors are being blocked because God has given you all of this, this talent and you want to maybe just make few money out of it, few coins out of it. But when people, and this is not just limited to Cameroon or Africans, it is everyone out there. Mm -hmm. It is more of your assignment that God has given you mm -hmm. to work on earth. If everybody can be in the assignment, the problem is People who do not qualify in positions, people who have not been called for a particular whatever, are actually the ones who rule in and managing places where they're not meant to be in. Now, people who are meant to be there are not the ones who are being called up for those things. So it is no longer merit. Like, oh, this guy is awesome with what they do. They are talented and gifted in aspect, and by, by virtue of that, they are meant to, to lead in this aspect. It is a question now of who you know the many godfathers you, you, you have and, you know, what your name is. So you see, like I said, again, it boils down, it starts on the falls on leadership. So we want to look at that, yeah. Yeah, but um, 
I want us to, 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 to stay on with this blame, accuse, and complain. Yeah. Almost everybody says, I don't have a job, there is nothing to do. And uh, there is a concept I learned that was last week, wash, don't, don't. Right. As you have handsome guys who are washing and turning, turning. Beautiful, yes, <laughs> beautiful ladies so who, who, will get, who, who will get up dressed so well and are moving around, impressing themselves right. and the community. And they think that it is because there are no jobs. Is it true? And they blame and they tell their parents, their, their mothers sympathetically tell people that John is in the house moving around because there are no jobs. Are they actually no 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 other opportunities? Are there no no avenues for them to get themselves gainfully uh, employed or occupied? There are definitely, most definitely, there are there are there are opportunities. Mm -hmm. Like I said, when they don't understand. Now I think the system again, like I said, has made a lot of people leave the hand to mouth style. Mm -hmm. We there's hardly um, encouragement coming from maybe the government for people to harness their talents and their gifts like that understand mm. that mm. now if when i was having this talk at ictu statistically i think the ministry of higher education mm. published these figures i think 2019 2017 to 2018 mm. it said they had cameroon has a hundred and twenty thousand graduates mr Kuhn. i need you to look at that that is yearly and that was as far back then now you think about the stat statistics of 2023 and beyond number of graduates we had few last week we had we graduated 550 plus ictu students you think mm -hmm. about it and we have um, hundreds of higher professional institutions across cameroon across cameroon we have these t 10 state universities across cameroon, across cameroon. Yeah. you do the maths mm -hmm. are these many and this is yearly mm -hmm. because year. before the, the year just goes like that mm -hmm. before it so you think about and this is in cameroon now think about those in nigeria mm -hmm. and the rest of the world the number of the competition mm -hmm. that these people how are there jobs available for these many students who come out to do are they do we have jobs that match these many graduates do we we don't have so these jobs are not there and uh, by the time you go to the university should you not already start thinking that the opportunities job opportunities with government may not be existing why not also uh, explore other avenues especially in the private uh, sector we're talking about marketing we're talking about ICT we're talking about um, other ventures that necessarily are not linked to the government but which may be very profitable it is profitable Again, you and I know how much salary some persons who might be earning in private sectors. Mm -hmm. Now, you know the minimum wage in Cameroon. That's public mm -hmm. for public workers. You think about the private sec sector. Now, I understand, like I said, and everything lies and falls, rises and falls on leadership. Mm -hmm. However, you and I have a role to play in that. Mm -hmm. So there are those... I don't want, like I said, I don't want to limit it to Cameroonians are just complaining and just complaining. Mm. We want to look at the system, how it favors them and how this, it has been disadvantaged to them as well. Okay, you want to take the blame, I want to take it, they want to take it as well. That's why I said, if we actually begin to look at life from the, uh, the, the lens of purpose, it's going to do a lot for us. You will not just wait to go get into that office with that CV and say, okay, I need a job in this company with the number of CVs you've put. Guess what? You'll also be thinking about what can I do with the gifts and talents that people, because people will patronize it. You see, I'm, I mean, I'm not, I mean, I'm a perfect example of purpose. Mm -hmm. And I know how beautiful purpose has made my life to mm -hmm. be, mm -hmm. you see. And I had those doors locked in my face. Before some of us wanted to travel abroad is because we tried to work in our country and we could not. This, uh, this accounts for why so many people are going out there. Like, again, the education do, does not prepare us for the job market. And we, we begin to see that. You see an accounting student, I mean, I read, I was everything in accounting, management, that field, because I had a, to major in one and minor in the other. Mm -hmm. I even did my uh, MBA in corporate finance, so I'm everything in that sector. But you think about it. 
Okay. I, I had to get back into purpose to find my, 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 my space in, 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 in this universe. I mean, if you have your next question, we can go about because you want to cut that. No, 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 it's okay. Delhi, uh, you are into counseling, marriage counseling, and um, you've united many families? Yeah, a lot. What is the problem with marriage today? <laughs> what is the problem? With Where marriage? is the problem? Yes, because. Okay, if I can answer that categorically, I think it's at a pop. pop uh, at a level of choice. Okay. Yeah. I think that we don't have marital problems. We have individual problems. Okay. I'll take that back. There is hardly anything as marriage problems or marital problems. Mm -hmm. There are individual problems. My baggages that I have as a person, which translates, I carry this baggage into marriage. You see what I mean? And another person as well carries so i come here this is me with all my baggages and my weaknesses which i've not worked on and guess what i think marriage i'm assuming that marriage is going to solve it and you on the other hand you're coming as a husband and all of that and we get it it's a sacrifice now yeah it is that is how god puts it christ and the church yeah the man and the woman yeah sacrifice yeah yeah but if i have a problem she has a problem we should sacrifice for one another no? there's fire and there's sacrifice there's mm. there should be an altar for that as mm. well all of these things count okay you could have a sacrifice and your altar is messed up you see it is not just one person when you say sacrifice the sacrifice is both ways mm. like i said you can have an altar that is blazing with fire and the sacrifice is not there in itself you see what i mean so yeah there should be that sacrifice in terms of that tangible sacrifice that you're making there should be an altar and then there's the god factor and that's marriage that you've you've really broken it down mm. literally i think that one of the major things and i'll use a word that most people are familiar with because when we talk about sacrifices most people will not get it it looks like okay christianity is just christianity but marriage is even people who don't know god get married mm -hmm. and of course it's all about principles i keep saying that now, one of the major things that I see is as much as you deal with yourself as a person, you deal with you, I talked about self, mm -hmm. you're also dealing with yourself. You haven't become a better version of you and I have become a better version of myself. Doesn't mean we're compatible still. You see what I mean? It doesn't mean we are compatible. What happens is I am beautiful and all of that and endowed. However, I meet another man who is handsome and every one of those things, yet compatibility fails. And because mm -hmm. we have more focus on the superficial things, the external values than the internal ones, then we now clash in marriage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's where those issues stem from. Not because marriage in itself is a problem. Okay. Not yeah. because marriage is a problem. I'll take, um, I don't know, those of you watching, if you have a question for Delhi, can you just uh, send it a... Uh, Mr. Kum, Leonard, greetings to you and our special guest on Air Daily Singer. Welcome to Cameroon Daily. After listening to our guest, I have this question for her. Daily, is there or are there, are there reasons that account for the female gender to be apportioned extra favor at the detriment of uh, the male gender in the situation where both of them have uh, issues? What could be those uh, reasons and why in the diaspora? Hope you understand that. Huh? Why do, why does the law favor women over, over, over men? the men? Yes. I, I actually asked this question to my mentor once, like, these people who enact these laws, they're men, and they're still the ones crying foul. What is going on? And I was amazed with the answer he gave me. He said, when a spirit, when a spirit takes over, mm -hmm. you act before even thinking. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, you would do something and not even believe you did that thing. You would do something and you cannot, that's something that is directly against you. Mm -hmm. I mean, you would enact laws that would destroy you tomorrow when the spirit has taken over. When you look at the things that are happening here, you will be like, there's a spirit that is going on. It's not just people waking up and signing their dead warrant. Mm -hmm. Because that's literally what is happening. It's not like the women are the ones sitting there and then they're signing, okay, to be against men, then we would understand. There are men who are making these laws that unfortunately doesn't favor them. And what accounts for that? 
Yeah, there's a spirit behind that. Maybe they were influenced at home. They were influenced at home. Before coming to talk. <laughs> they were in, who? By who? By, by you people. There's a spiritual atmosphere hovering around that only me people who have been revealed things would understand what's happening. Yeah. Okay. Um, good evening to you, Mr. Liu and Mommy Deli. I'm blessed watching the program this afternoon. Thank you uh, very much. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Liu. We are grateful for the presence of uh, Mommy Deli in your studios today. Thank you very much uh, to you too. Uh, thanks, uh, Mr. Kum, for bringing this iconic uh, figure on set. Through my media prime, we are privileged to hear from her. My question for her is, what has she in plan to give back to her origin, especially village, with these experiences and exposure? What does Antiphon writing? What do I plan to give back? How do I plan to give back to my village, yes, my to origin? Mm -hmm. What do I plan to give up my origin? <laughs> I will plan to give a lot of things and it is the, the question of well, is that exactly what they need because mm. you don't just give things to people because they ask for mm -hmm. you give what they need I've not just been called to my people I've been called to Cameroonians and Africans and the world at large and I'm basking in my purpose and it's it it's not everybody that I'm called to or for mm. now the people who listening listening to me and following the works I do benefit from it even from my people, my Ngi people, just so we know I'm from Ngi, my motivation. It's a lot of Ngi people who don't value what I do, they don't relate to. I cannot force them to accept it. Now, I am one of the cultural identity ambassadors that I know in Cameroon, at least I would say that. Now, I talk about my culture and I've tried to get everyone, not just from Ngi, and if Ngi people will be part of that as well, it's going to be beautiful to make them to value themselves, understand their identity, and run with it. To know that you were made from Gi or you came from Gi for a purpose. Now, this is a message that spans across the entire globe, not just Gi people. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? Now, if it has to be specific, what would I do? I want to tar the roads of Gi. <laughs> oh, yes. You are laughing? <laughs> These, as long as I was born, matter of fact, those roads have been like that. And I was shocked that p individuals can come together and actually contribute to that. I didn't know. I th I've always thought it's the government that has to do that. At some point, I asked, like, when I, the last time I went to the village, I'm like, the roads are as bad. I've never seen worse roads. Yeah. I've not seen worse roads than roads to Ngi. Or let me just say more motivation. Maybe the worst roads have not been there. And I had that concern, like, how do we fix this? I think somebody told me that time that the government has plans to do it, so individuals could not do it. And of recent, I think um, the, I think it's the mayor, if it's not the mayor, I had to talk of the uh, um, Andek Municipal Council. Um, of course, that's the capital of Ngi. And we, we, we're talking about raising funds, the Ngi people. I'm like, this thing, we would have done this. And that's how I can con contribute my own quota. Like, this is my own contribution that is immediately tangible. And you can see that we can do those things. So how do I contribute? I want to be part of that project. You okay. see, and I hope that every Ngi person listening to me can as well contribute. So that we, we have elites in, from Ngi, intelligent people, strong women and men. Our roads... It's, 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 I mean, I wish you could see pictures of that. And I'm not hiding that. Because we're not going to continuously leave that to the government if we can do something about it. Okay. Yeah. Good things to you all in the studio and welcome to Madame Deli. Madam, Deli just said uh, it all. Our educational system doesn't prepare us uh, for the job market upon the fact that we have a very high rate of unemployment. Our government needs to create lots of training centers uh, from subdivisional levels to regions uh, for youth to learn. Right. Trades are practically at a lower rate for all to afford. Uh, this will change Cameroon for good. Mango Terence is watching from Mutengene. That's in Cham. Right. Okay. Um, <coughs> good afternoon to all of you in the studio. Uh, Delhi, we're glad to watch you live from Cameroon, okay? Mm -hmm. 
as she said yeah i hope um, you have tell me you've had you've received gifts already a lot of gifts i'm even thinking i think my kilo is more gone past the usual kilos so i'm not sure how i'm going to manage them but i will take all of it back <laughs> yeah, okay so if you have a gift uh, for delhi <laughs> Get to me, I'll hand a gift to Oh, her. yes, oh, yes. I accept gifts, gifts in kind and cash, yeah. Every currency out there, <laughs> dollars, pounds, Cameroon, Okay, Sierra. good afternoon to you, Mr. Liu. We are glad to see Mommy Deli on air with you right now. Greet her for us as uh, she's receiving uh, the greetings. Uh, uh, good afternoon, uh, Mr. Liu and uh, Mommy Deli. We are happy to have you with us again. Okay, thank you. Please, when you write, tell us or where you're writing uh, from. Right. Indicate where you're writing uh, from so that I can read, read it out so that we know where we are being watched out from. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Liu. I'm watching live from Bermuda. Thank you for this uh, program. I'm learning a lot. But then let's move on on uh, the issue of empowering uh, girls in mm. Cameroon. Okay. Are you, what is the impression you have of young girls, especially the beautiful ones? Are they making good use of uh, the natural endowment given to them by God? I'm talking about the influencers. Oh, you guys are helping to turn <laughs> ladies uh, away from hard work. I think I think this question should be for both men and women because okay. yeah it's okay. it's more it's all of them I I don't just influence men no mm. when I mean women ladies because most often they be like young girls no I have a plethora of men mm. yeah mm. who follow me and mm. are inspired as well um, influencers I went I had a meeting with some big guns <laughs> I would say you know and I was privileged because it was an honor for me to sit on the same table with them mm. they said a lot of things and when it got to my turn I told them that and it, they asked I had to introduce myself and I just said well let me introduce myself as an influencer and I'll leave it at that and you could see how <coughs> the entire room was a bit uh, like I could imagine the things that were going to they are also influencers and they have they've garnered this many followers and they are passing on whatever they think is good a good lifestyle to the young ladies who model themselves after them you see i can't change everything but i can change the the, the little i can change so yes i see a lot of young girls with so much peer pressure they want to be like cardi b in cameroon we say low budget cardi b like that without a source of income mm -hmm. And when you are so, when you see us, as we start saying that, you know this, a girl is destined, no, not destined, that's not the right word. You know a girl is getting into prostitution when they start thinking they are too beautiful to work. Oh, I'm too beautiful to do this kind of job. I'm too beautiful to stain my hands. My nails are too long for me to do whatever. That is a gateway to start prostituting. And I always say prostitution is private and public. It's just that so many people are prostituting, just few are on the streets. So yeah, there's a lot of girls who are prostituting. So you have to, you're not just having one boyfriend, two, three, four, five, and about three, four sugar daddies littered out there. And because you are not in the streets and you think you're not prostituting, <laughs> it's prostitution. Low. It's actually prostitution. It's a fancy way of prostituting. Let me put it like that. A lot of young girls are doing that. Why? the pressure that the influencers have put out there they want to be all glit and glam and they're budgeting and they're basing that in the budget of a man they've barely even met mm -hmm. of a man who has his children and his wife out there they're looking at the lifestyle of their own friends the peer pressure if i always say that when i was in the university if your one two three friends are dating a married man <laughs> it's a matter of time you date a married man as well if you have those kind of friends and what do they see now this media is the global village social media especially mm -hmm. we are all seeing everything you and i are seeing everything watching the same kind of programs and all of that the the the, the tendency is these young girls think that is the way forward and how do i do this like how many of them are willing to resist a man who proposes to give them an iphone 14 you know for all of the the things that come along with it how many how many young girls listening to me can say you know what i must not have an iphone 14 because i i do not even qualify for it 
how many young girls listening to me can say you know what i have these values i cannot do these and that that people are doing because you know what i don't need brazilian mongolian hair i can bask in my own natural hair or at least we have our rasta excuse me which is quite afro how many every five ten girls nine girls are wearing wigs of different people hairs of different people the third the, the tenth one will be pressured to do that this is it so and the influencers compound to that you see an influencer looking all glitter and glam no spots nothing always with red bottoms when i say red pot bottoms i mean um uh, christian Louboutin. Mm -hmm. okay those very expensive shoes uh, they cost millions they have expensive bags every day these are the different things they project in the media and what is they don't they don't justify that i'm in the media one of the biggest influencers in cameroon <laughs> there's only how much money you're making from these things even when you get brand and uh, endorsement deals you have it comes with the territory i mean you have to take care of other things mm -hmm. it's only it's really i mean how many of these influencers have these brands that actually food their lifestyles let's be honest Okay, the um, young girls don't know about this so they think okay i can might as well get it or like i always say it's only how many sugar daddies you will sleep with eh? sugar daddies have so many girls they want to change <laughs> as, as often as possible so yeah i hope that when i talk to them they listen i i, I it's my prayers yeah we're still on that um Dennis singer thank you for answering my question on why the female gender is highly favored against uh, the male gender in the diaspora i thought as much uh, there should e really be a spirit uh, behind it i kept pondering a lot yeah. why men would accept to put down a laws uh, that would e work against them in return uh, this is a point of concern moreover mm -hmm. uh, to your elbow and enjoy Okay, you meant a more part to your elbow and I enjoy your stay with us in Cameroon. Gala okay. is uh, responding to what you said earlier on. Okay. Uh, good afternoon. Happy listening uh, from you guys. Uh, how do we handle uh, this uh, oof, forcing its way into Mother Africa? This is Gad Gad writing from Douala, talking about um, LGBT. Uh, this, how do we fight it? I think uh, you're a Christian. You follow the values of uh, your religion and uh, certainly the values added down to you by your parents here yeah? yeah. i don't want us to get into that uh greetings uh, sir i'm so proud of our sister in the studio live i never knew she's uh, from my tribe oh i'm so proud to know uh, that we have uh, such a celebrity in Ghi. may god bless her stay in the country and bless uh, my media prime also nixon g watching from Mbange here it's okay Nixon is not far from, from us. Uh, it's next door. I hope we catch up with Nixon after the program. I say welcome home, Mom Delhi. Welcome. I'm actually one of your followers, mm. but uh, for months now, I haven't seen you, literally, because my phone got bad. I'm so happy seeing you on <laughs> and profiting from your Solomon vibes, uh, <laughs> your wisdom. I haven't forgotten your values and teaching. I'm presently an unemployed esthetician, but still not working because I have two beautiful kids assuming the consequences of my action. Because I'm not married yet, but while home, I'm trying to discover my purpose and it's really very hard for me. Sometimes I get frustrated and stressed, but thank God for grace. MC is writing from Kribi. Mm. Thank you, uh, MC. Now, uh, Delhi, there is this uh, phenomenon where so many persons are, are having a rethink on the notion of relationship, love and marriage, okay. where it is becoming a business, commerce, commercial interest. <laughs> I'm getting into this relationship because I must get this in return, especially financially. Life in itself generally, as unconventional as, a, as what I'm about to say is, is actually a matter of exchange. We're okay. trading and battering. Okay. <laughs> Because it's only how much, because even Christ died for us, mm -hmm. and there was expectation that you would even you receive him. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, but of course, people take that in a negative way. 
And so it's a lot of people nowadays who get into it for the benefits of it, not because they actually sacrificing, like we talked earlier, but because they actually just looking for what uh, they want to benefit from it. Mm -hmm. So you see a young girl will get married to a man who is old enough to be he, her grandfather because they want to come out of maybe poverty or, on the other hand, compete with their friends who are doing well in, its, in, in the sugar daddy business. You see what I'm saying? So this competition is one of the reasons. That's why I said there's no problem with marriage. It's only individuals with their issues uh, who bring into the marriage. When you get into it for the benefits or the, the negative benefits, what you can get, because trust me, you cannot get into marriage and you don't hope to, for it to be beautiful. Matter of fact, you're exchanging those vows. It is for better and for worse. Mm -hmm. You're not just getting there for worse as well. Because mm -hmm. people always say, remember there's worse. Also remember there's, it's going to be beautiful. Mm -hmm. So yes, so if you get into the marriage and all what you have to offer is worse, hey, people expect good to it. You see, so now they're doing it for, like I said, the negative reasons. Let me there's no it. how mm. it's gonna last. Yeah, but but love relationship, Delhi. I don't know. I, that's it's true. It was sinful in our days, where you would love a girl. You remember, I don't know whether they wrote letters to you. Oh yeah, they, of course. You would we write let, a letter. You are in this school. You write a letter to this to this lady. That is, people actually loved. <coughs> I, would, I remember a lady. Would, would get a handkerchief white right uh, on embroidered it. On, on it and then I'll sent, sent to and you. I receive and just sleeping on it was <laughs> everything was everything values yes uh, have when, been when, that is you felt that somebody loves you yeah. today is trade yeah it's it's trade I get it mm. now it is trade mm. and like I said the negative side of it because if you were going by trade trade is good right we exchange. Mm. When you think about it, you're giving me money. I'm not giving you as much of the services or quality. It was. That it, is was it was. It was just love. People yes. loved. People a guy loved, and a, a lady loved. That is, you saw people enjoy a relationship. Yeah. We are together because we love, love ourselves. Each other. We can. It's no longer there. It is not there, and like I said, the world is now ruled by money. Money is the is a, is a money is a god you know that right and people have bought into that god and they're worshiping it that is the reason why apart from relationships a lot of other things are not even working mm -hmm. so so people are not even authentic with themselves mm -hmm. yeah it's such a superficial world now talk more of, i mean just yourself you deceive yourself even with that and you think about the next person that comes to you yeah people have so devalued it you're talking about even ourselves you think about our mothers our parents you come from a family, you might even come from a family where you've seen your mom stand, I mean, the test of time with your dad. Some, some dads were even sick like that. The, the mother still stood up, mother stood. Mm -hmm. the, the wife is, 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 has become different and the, the men are still there, you see. But right now, like I said, the values have so been changed, altered, and, and people are now, it's contrary. Now, I was talking about driving when I came, I had issues, one of my major issues in Cameroon is with the driving and a lot of, it's just too much chaos in the roads and I'm like, I, I can hardly do this, you know. And people are telling me that, Delhi, because the red light is showing and you're meant to stop and everybody's going and even the policeman is standing there and it's like, I'm like, what is going on here? And then one of my friends said, Delhi, see, if you are driving and you're doing the right thing, you're rather doing the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. Because everybody is so accustomed with doing the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. And that's what has happened. And I'm asking him, like, hey, can't you do the right thing? He said, if I do the right thing, it's going to mess up the rest of the people who are doing the wrong thing. And that's why they will insult you, like, on that van. <laughs> that's literally what he's saying. So he's stopping. Mm -hmm. So this is what has happened. Everybody is doing the wrong thing now. Everybody, quote unquote, because every other person is doing it. And a few people who still have values, there's a pressure, enormous pressure to let go because it doesn't look like it's going to benefit you and I, right? But hey, and I always say this the right thing remains right, even if nobody is doing it. And wrong is wrong, even if everybody is doing it. So it, even if it means you doing that by you, yeah. Is that, not, is that not also why so many marriages are messed up today? Because Nobody actually loves. Yeah, it's there's, there's hardly love. That foundation of love, right? Mm. It's a game of interest now.
Mm. Yeah, okay. that's why even more divorces are more are recorded, mm. more than any time in history. What are you giving me? There is a three. There is a, and I think seven on. I think I read statistically a seven on ten chance that your marriage will fail in this dispensation. I mean, for those of you who are about to get married, this is not scaring you. This is just letting you know that it is not as easy out there, especially with marriages. And so you want to take the necessary precautions. So like I always say that if you understand the consequences, like you count the cost of something mm -hmm. and you know this is these checks and balances before you get. That's why my, what my book is all about. And I'm coming back to Cameroon in a few months to launch it. And yeah, okay. people can have to read. Good afternoon, Mr. Liu. Good things to the Queen in the house. Uh, Mommy Deli, you are just the best. Uh, good to have you live on my Media Prime. Uh, receiving wisdom from you, uh, great woman. Much love to you. Waiting for you in Boya, Fanla, uh, Lidwina, Epuz, Awa. I don't know whether you have a program to go to. <laughs> Boya. Yeah, I don't know. Is it true that uh, there is uh, greener pastures in the white man's land than in Africa? Please, how true is this uh, assertion? Okay, now, Deli, I'm sure you're taking note, uh, down note of that. Uh, greetings, uh, sir and madam. I'm Francis Umo. I'm enjoying your program here in Port Harcourt, Nigeria. Kudos to you guys over there. Thank you. Uh, glad to know that you're watching us uh, from... Nigeria. Good evening to you guys uh, in the house. Uh, my name is Enwell. I'm watching from the United Arab Emirates. I'm really enjoying the program. Thank you. Um, good afternoon to you, Mr. Liu and Mommy Delhi. Happy, happy to have you here in Cameroon. It's my first time to watch you on TV. Mommy, uh, try to <laughs> put something in their head. Okay, <laughs> Ferdinand from Jum in the south uh, region of Cameroon. Thank you, uh, Ferdinand. Hi, good afternoon to my media prime. Uh, Mommy Deli, I appreciate the energy you put on. Uh, so thanks for being uh, so simple and may the almighty be with you all. Uh, you do thanks uh, once more for I'm happy since yesterday I saw you. I am Ange from Douala, okay? I don't know. It's Angie. Angie from Douala. She was at uh, Nee's Kitchen yesterday with you. Ange. Okay. Ange, okay. Well, Ange. That's a francophonie. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I, just, I just call it Ange. Angel. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Please uh, help me uh, tell a celebrity that uh, Hon Ho, that's... Hon Ho. That's in our dialect. Hon Ho. Hon Ho. Yeah. That's in our dialect. Ngono. Is that it? She wrote H O H O N H O H. Maybe he, she didn't spell it properly. Okay. Or it's, I guess it's something in the dialect she wants me to okay. relate with. I Meet see. with her after the program and offer her, s offer her some good palm wine. I've uh, been tapped by Awangi Brothers from Lenzi. It's still Nixon. Okay. Uh, Nixon, you know where the studio is. Uh, we are ending in 30 minutes' time. <laughs> so if you can come around, you meet her. Mm -hmm. Right. She say, he says that he wants you to taste some good. Uh, oh. wine tap somewhere in Lendy. Lendy is uh, behind here. Nixon, I also need uh, the, the, <laughs> palm wine. the palm wine. Yes, if you, if you can uh, join us. <coughs> Now, one goes to to be to be clear about uh, this issue of influencers. Okay. Yes, it gives the impression to so many persons who are following on social media that you guys are too rich. Hmm. We know some of them; they are extremely rich and uh, living so so good lives. Where is this money coming from? Do I know? You are an influencer. <laughs> Do I know? Are you not very rich? Well, am I? I don't know. I, I mean, you're telling me. You tell me. Am I, I rich? Mean, I don't know. And very rich. Jeez. <laughs> I mean, I claim that. Um, where is this money coming from? Now, first of all, let's talk about who influencers are. Okay. And in my laid man definition, I would break it down to say that an influencer is somebody who has had, who has attained a particular level of influence. Mm. Now, what does this mean? It means that you listening to me and I and Mr. Kum and the rest of the people out there are into a craft whatever a job an art uh, a talent they're doing that diligently so it could be an artist it could be a footballer it could be it could just be anyone out there doing something diligently and they have 
gotten to that level where they've garnered a lot of followers and these many followers are follow that said i always say they follow them hook line and sinker now these people have had these many followers and apart from that they can seat and channel narratives propose narratives or they have a narrative that they are pushing out and people relate to it so i'm an influencer because i can say something and you begin to second guess the things around you you begin to second guess like are you sure this girl is saying this and then when you actually buy into my narrative you follow me hook line and sinker like that an influencer is just somebody like for instance i always use the example of military you have different ranks you get to this rank i don't know how those ranks are however you understand mm. ranking and then you get to a level so an artist a footballer a musician and whoever can get to the level of an influencer that's why they say everybody's an influencer no not everybody's an influencer everybody has an art and what a talent or so but not everybody's an influencer for you to know you're an influencer you've gotten to that level where you can channel a narrative and it matters it really matters more like you can come up with a doctrine and people begin to follow you and i had answered this question like i said we had a round table and i explained to them and somebody asked me like oh does it mean me john Fundi was an influencer and i'm like a political influencer and it was that is one person who was as influential people followed him they gave their life up for that the movement the cause they believed in him like that but there's a lot of other politicians who are not influencers so you see I talk on relationship, I talk on a lot of other things, channel um, social movements in the, in the media. However, other people do, but they're not influencers. Because they cannot stand and boldly say that this is it, and a young girl wants to model their lives around that. So like I said, it is a galon <laughs> that you have actually gotten. It's a state that you attain. Not everybody does it. So it's not every artist that is an influencer. It's not every footballer. Samuel Etofis, Zadi Eto. <laughs> mm, yeah, Zadi. Zadi. You, you met up with him? Um, oh, you sh you should book an appointment for us to meet. <laughs> okay. Zadi Eto is um, an influencer mm -hmm. par excellence. I mean, in his field, you see. But there are loads of footballers out there who are not influencers, just so that we do not mix these things. That's mm -hmm. why when you say you're an influencer, everybody's just like, oh, those people who are noisy out there. No. Think about what they're yeah, trying my, to do. My focus is uh, uh, these ladies who are flaunting lots of, lots of. Cars. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I said I was going to get to that. Mm. Now, you influence a lot of things. What I'm influencing is different from what she is, she or he or she is influencing. Mm -hmm. And because of that, because our value systems are different, there are people out there who will never patronize me. Like I always say, I get on air like this, and somebody is just uh, that girl. They've just switched. They've just uh, uh, sweep, uh, switched the channel to something else and i get it i really don't bother about that why our value systems don't tie this other person that you see as negative influence trust me there's a whole lot of people following them their value systems align so hey those companies now that <coughs> relate to what i'm saying they're out there calling me as brand ambassadors i'm signing these deals there are companies that would never sign me, Mr. Kuhn. Mm -hmm. Oh, there are. I mean, loads of them. And of course, I would not call him. But there's this blog out there, actually. It was always fond of writing about me. And I say this on TV. Always writing about me, talking about me. When I say things, it goes viral. Of course, they put it a blog about it. And I was close to one of them. And I noticed that I've done a lot of things, good information, trends, and other bloggers. And this particular blog has not said anything for a while. So I cornered them, one of them. And I'm like, I don't understand. Like, is it that you don't see the things I post or the things that are happening in the media? Like, okay, my comment was everybody, even the French bloggers were talking about it. How about yours, which is even close to me, and I have your number privately. And guess what he told me? That they are actually working for a particular company, and there's a narrative I'm pushing in the media that is against that company, and unfortunately, they cannot talk about me anymore. So you see, there are doors that are shut for me because I am standing for a cause. There are doors that open as well because I stand for a cause, and that happens to them as well. So there are brand deals that they would sign and huge sums of money come along with it so some of them get money from those things but i said there's hardly any money i think there's there's something that has been made in cameroon that entertain us because we have fame you see i'm famous considerably but it it will not match your money your mm -hmm. bank account well, it's one thing to be famous yet another to be rich mm -hmm. so you see rich people are trying to leverage on the fame of famous people mm -hmm. and likewise 
you, you know, get there. But look at very famous people. They, they don't really have money. I don't know if it is the system that is making that happen, but hey, their own um, legal tender, I would call, is fame. And yes, so some people now use that and then give them the money. So if you want to go viral now, a scandal can just come out between you and I. And you, or you've gone as viral as, as viral, I mean, for somebody who it's not as as you're, you're very popular anyway so you see what i mean mm. i'm just saying for maybe a politician does that is not known mm. wants to go just pump money and pump into an actress um, um a, a, an artist an influencer and boom and, and a scandal comes out there it becomes an a very popular politician now you see so the leverage on each other these brand deals we get them. I get brand deals. But to say it, it would foot an, a very lavish lifestyle, you're lying through your teeth. Well, well, yeah. So, so where, where, where do most of you guys who call yourselves influencers who, who go on vacations in... Uh... Have you seen me on vacation? I'm in Cameroon on vacation, Mr. Ko. <laughs> Did you see me on vacation? Did we go on vacation? I don't know. <laughs> Not in the UK with you. Maybe you go to. It's a cool. You go to Bahamas. You go to Bahamas. I, I want to go. On, I want to. I, I will soon go to Bahamas. I would soon go to Dubai. I love Dubai. I want to go yeah, there. But, 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 what, what is what is the end point? What is the objective of showcasing a lifestyle that may not be real, uh, knowing that uh, you are considered an influencer, uh, especially on young girls? I mean, everybody has their reasons as to why they're doing the things they're doing. Mm. You want to project a particular image, like you say, you, you, you fake it until you make it. Mm. Most people fake it and then keep faking it because you can hardly make it because this is, this is the thing. When you say fake it until you make it, you can hardly make it when you, you keep faking it. It's only how many people would make it when they keep faking it. Because when you keep faking it, people who are meant to help you, your destiny helpers, they assume that you're fine. How, do you, how are you going to make it? Now, if you they get to the level where, okay, because of what you project, they want that it draws the attention, when they need the services that they need from you, you would hardly deliver. And it's only a matter of time and you're, you're taken off that. I'm just saying that, be yourself. See, be you. Young girls listening to me, just be you. I, we can hardly... Christ himself said there's always going to be poor people. And that translates to there's always going to be evil, there's always going to be wicked people, there's always going to be negative influence, there's always going to be the things that you do not like. It's a matter of choice. You choose. Because a conscious decision, I choose who I follow. I choose the things I want to do. Because you have the choice okay. to make for your life. So yeah, um, I better, of course, if I trust that I'll travel as well. Okay, but one day at a time. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, which school in Cameroon trains flight attendants in Cameroon? Mommy Delhi? Uh, okay, yeah, I don't know, just write um, for, I don't know, write to talk with her after the program. Good evening, Mr. Liu. Um, that lady seems to be too sure of herself. Yes, mm. uh, she has to be too sure. If not, I she should be. <laughs> yeah. This one says, uh, oops. Good afternoon in the house. Welcome home. Our dearest daily. This is one of your followers uh, writing. So glad to watch you talk and impact our positive knowledge on us again. Have a nice and beautiful stay here in Cameroon. Berenice Sandrine is writing from Mutengene. Mm. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mommy Deli, uh, for your succinct response. We are proud of you. Mom and me more and mm -hmm. may more be inspired okay may you be inspired the more mm -hmm. by your works i uh, keep uh, doing what you know doing best uh, hearing from you is inspirational and is blessed having your likes making the difference and very proud of their origin okay uh, thank you very much mm. i'll take one or two more um good evening to you guys in the studio my regards to mommy delhi singer officials and to you mr liu mommy delhi singer official we are proud of you keep up the great work a uh, yungdang Eyong in nokbe is writing from yaoundi delicious writing from yaoundi okay um i don't know what delicious means here yeah? delicious is it, is it a rice? And it's my name delhi okay and shows. so uh, it's my followers so any follower of mine who identifies, go about my narrative, follow me like that. They call themselves the Delicious. So it's my okay. name, Delhi, 
D E L L Y and then okay. short. So it's just a way of, you know. Yeah. Hello, Leo. Most, most influencers uh, show off the easy life of social media and this gives, this gives uh, pressure to the younger generation to go out uh, there and uh, walk out of their way to be like them, okay? Mm, which is not good, eh? that is negative influence. Except I'm wrong, daily. Yeah. If you are talking people out of uh, their core, yeah. Wanting to be like you, mm -hmm. you are you are negatively influencing them. Yeah. Mr. Kum Leonard, the rich life uh, portrayed by some social media influencers is fake. <laughs> Meet some of them in real life, and you will be shocked. Life is also <laughs> showing some of them shaggy, but once they come to social media, they appear extravagantly dressed. I hate what I don't like. Okay. <laughs> Yes, this uh, viewer is particularly very angry oh, okay. at what is being portrayed. We right. have uh, 20 more minutes uh, to go. Okay. Yes, I'm taking, I'm stealing time. You should. I'm stealing time from somewhere else because okay. we started late. Right. Let's talk about um, this notion of believing in ourselves and promoting and consuming <coughs> what we produce. Right. There is a confusion. You are pushing a narrative alongside um, CY and some people are not very comfortable with it. What is wrong in promoting the fact that we should consume what we produce? You, you tell me, what is, what is, I should be the one ask, asking a question. Um, so let me, let me state it categorically that mm. I am not the founder, or which word do I use, mm. you know, of, of the 8020 movement, mm. no. I, I'm a proponent of that movement after a while of all Pancho CY haven't talked about that or propagated that in the media for quite a while, like I said. And now I said, I was, I'm talking about cultural identity for us, you, me, those out there listening, to have a sense of cultural identity, to I understood, to relate, identify with where they're coming from and all what not. So I sat one day and I'm thinking to myself, hmm, why is it that I'm more prone to wearing Brazilian, Mongolian hair, and that's when I feel beautiful. Why do I have to wear only outfits of other sides, like fabrics from different worlds or different nations or different uh, um, um, rays and all of that? And when I put on my own Afri, um, Afri too, like we, we call it, Atogo and the rest, I don't feel as beautiful. Why do I feel the need to bleach my skin and not having my original natural color until I bleach and look like that before I feel beautiful enough. I began to ask myself. So it was more like me in this, in this, I don't know, cocoon, asking myself a lot of questions. And then see why he's on the other side saying, support your own, do this, do that. You people are not supporting each other. You people are not doing this. We have all the natural resources. We all have all the human resources ever. We have all the financial resources. We have all of these. Can we just look at ourselves and don't keep on being like stooges to other nations? We could say chinda. We always use that word chinda. So see why was on the other hand he's saying that. And then I said that you know that sudden moment that if. It's a epiphany moment, a sudden realization. You say, hmm, now I get it. Why I see why is questioning all of the different reasons why you are not promoting our own, why we are so complex about us, why we believe every other person is fine but us. I'm thinking the solution lies at the level of our cultural identity. Mm -hmm. That now, so he's showing a problematic and I'm bringing the solution that if every Cameroonian, let's start with us home, would only get to understand the sense of a cultural identity, to know exactly where they are coming from, who we are. Mm -hmm. We would solve all of these complex, inferiority complex issues that CY keeps projecting. Mm -hmm. So that is just basically what this is all about. And then you see why our visions are really merged and really, that's why we, we, we it's hard to really separate us like that because one is just the opposite side, the, the other side, just two sides of the, of the same coin, mm. you see. So, yeah, I think... Do you, do you have the impression that uh, Cameroonians are complex? We are not uh, very comfortable with what we produce. We see, we always see what comes from out of the country better than what we, 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 we give out. Yes, 
I mean categorically, yes. Mm. Cameroonians, and let me let me speak for English this is part of Cameroon. So if you notice, see why it's constantly being bashed in the media. Why? Because he says that Cameroon produce good music. Now let me then it comes in now with hey, hold it there, see why we're not just producing good music. We're talking cultural identity and what are the components of cultural identity. We start talking about our artifacts, mm -hmm. we talk about our cuisine, we talk about our about, about music, mm -hmm. we talk about our dressing, we talk about our religion. Oh yes, it's part of our cultural identity. Mm -hmm. We talk about all of these different components. And then see why he's saying now we have the best of all of these components that you're listing. Why do we why in the name of God would a Cameroonian woman from Gi be doing a wedding and we are singing a da da from Nigeria and that's what I had that, that's what happened we <laughs> that's, that's what literally happened to me so you can imagine that's what they're asking these are legit questions that uh, anybody who is keyword intentional about their origin or their future would begin to ask themselves especially in this dispensation where everybody or every other nation is sold out to their own their own things have you flipped the coin ever seen a Nigerian singing any uh, Akari? That's one of our songs, Hongi. During their, their, in fact, not even during their official weddings, just even homing. Have mm -hmm. you ever heard that? Have you ever heard a Nigerian given names to their kids, Cameroon names to their kids? Let's, let's answer this question. So it's not about collaborating and no, 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 no. It's about Understanding what you have, the blessing you have, and knowing that God don't do ugly, He made you come from Cameroon for a purpose. He would have made us, made you a Nigerian, but you're a Cameroonian. And regardless of what has happened, you did not stay that way because God had a purpose for you being part of Cameroon. Now you think about it. These other different nations, we always use Nigeria because that's that's the the the, the immediate example that we can all relate to. Every use Ghana, Kenya, these particular thing I'm talking about would still stay. Now you think about it. Why every other person believes that their own is the best, their food is the best, and Cameroon not this is not I'm not kidding, has the best cuisine in the world. Not I mean one of the best cuisines in the world. Now when it comes to Africa, we have these varieties. Why can't we be the leading country in Africa doing showcasing our food? And all of these have you seen our cultural outfits have you even taken time to see it which nation in the world dresses as beautifully as Cameroonians I mean when it comes to culture we have diverse languages mm. yet you think about the number of ethnic groups in Cameroon with different languages. We are not done learning I'm not I'm from Gi. I've not even understood what you're from womb right and you i don't even know how to greet you but i'm more interested in knowing how nigerians are greeting does this sound does how does this sit does this sit well with you these are basic things like i said people who are intentional should begin to ask themselves especially when you've gotten to a particular level and when cy talks about this and i'm echoing it louder and i'm saying these are the concerns and these are the solutions if we only can begin to understand that we are a blessed nation and we have all of these resources and we begin we can begin to make use of them now, there is a lot of we, there is a lot of, we suppose we're supposed to patronize all of this to make sure that um we project what we produce we are supposed to patronize it. That is, uh, Cameroonians as yes. a whole. Yes. Charity, they say, begins at home, right? Mm, mm. You're supposed to produce and buy. Mm. We're not talking about mediocrity. Mm. But hey, even if when we get to mediocrity, guess what? Nigerians will buy their mediocre products, promote their mediocre until it gets to the level where it's celebrated worldwide. We are the first people to talk mediocrity. Have you seen mediocrity out there? How many have you seen other countries and the things that they, they, they see as as top top notch to them? Not saying that we should not. We can imp help these ones who are doing mediocre work, push it out there and make it become the level at which we want to. Remember the days when Nigerians were struggling with music? They had mediocre music. Guess what? Cameroon was booming. 
But you look at how much we've traded places. Why? They've been intentional about their cultural identity. Nigerians are the best people in Africa when it comes to cultural identity, having that sense of cultural identity. And we always use them as example. Why? Because they are, like I said, the perfect example. I live abroad. I have Nigerian friends. They speak Yoruba to their children. It is only Cameroonians who think speaking your dialect or your vernacular or your mother tongue is a problem. Oh, they don't want to identify with other Ngi. I meet a fellow, a fellow Ngi girl. And now we are now what is in. And we think that we are now modern. <laughs> now understand this. And I always say this, and I've said this over and over. Moderni modernization is not westernization. Mm -mm. Modernization to me is we understanding what we have and ameliorating it as the days go by. That's what the whites are doing. They never, they were not at this level. They got to the level because they had these products and they thought it could be better. They made it better. They kept making it better. But what we Africans are doing is we've left our own products and we are now saying to be modern, we have to leave all of these. That's why some of you listening to me have to bleach your skin. Why? Because you're thinking white man find past black man. You see what I mean? And you think now when you become quote unquote white, which is a camouflage of so, so photocopy you are modern so modernization is not westernization this is me as a cultural identity advocate talking to the young ones like if a young girl is growing up with this sense of a cultural identity so you don't need 20 brazilian hair and as much as if you want to do that you know it could be optional it becomes an option not a dye you see a girl is working and they are saving money to get a hair from another human being's head. When have you ever seen a white lady struggling to get your kinky? When? You tell me. These is the things I'm saying in the media, and it's not sitting well with a lot of people and they're bashing, and you know what, we're here to stay. Yeah. Okay, you're here to, to, say, to stay, but uh, let's talk about uh, the solidarity and uh, patronage from amongst actors in the various uh, sectors. Let's take um, the example of uh, the entertainment industry how supportive are uh, the actors in this industry how for supportive what, yes towards one another mm, i think for the most part mm. i insist for the most part mm. people support their immediate friends more okay. people also support those who say the same things as, as them mm. you see it's a competitive world nobody wants the other person to be uh, above them everybody wants to be on top of their game and doing that mm -hmm. so the thing normally remember support means i have to show you i have to project this out there i have to say a lot of these things to you i have to show you what i'm doing i have to put your craft out there mm -hmm. and that would translate to me i give you customers and people would come to you more than me mm -hmm. now you think about it okay. everybody wants to now we are above t more than above time, right? And so we have to cut this. <laughs> no, I, no, I still had some time, but they are telling me that um, yeah, the, sure. the news has to come up. At, okay. Uh, yeah. So five minutes we got. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, um, now how do we turn this around? Daily? How do we get actors in the movie industry, in the music industry, in uh, other spheres to work together so that we can convince Cameroonians that we are the best? We must not always work together. We can work in different different groups, people mm. who understand each other. Because to say everybody would work together, it's a big lie to me. Mm. However, those who are meant to work together should work together. Now, what are we working on? Our originality. <laughs> It boils down to the same thing I was talking about. So in a, whatever craft, you are, pre, you are being patriotic enough to look within you first before outsourcing mm. from different nations or different, you know, um, um, places. And then you get together and we say, everybody doing that which they've been called to do, while the artists are there producing the music or the, the, the movies, influencers like us are pu pushing it out in the media and saying these are the beautiful sides. While all of the other things are happening in Cameroon, some influencers are there saying there's this beautiful side about Cameroon as well. We must not always talk ne negative about the nation. These are things, the blessings that we have as a nation we can put out there. Okay. So it's holding each other's hand. In a sense, yeah. Good evening, Mr. Leo and Madam Delhi. Please tell Mommy Delhi to remember to advise our young, vibrant youths in abroad to stay away from old mothers that are equal to their grandmothers. It's alarming now, especially in the USA. Let them work hard. 
I don't know what he's talking about, uh, <laughs> Delhi. Um, uh, I think no. it's about women, um, uh, young guys having. I mean, it's it's a, it's not normal. Mm -hmm. I would say, but it's not strange either. Okay. Yeah. So people sleep around. It doesn't happen just abroad. Mm -hmm. Sleep around and have money, do not work, and yeah. I mean. Okay. I said to my mom, "That's Delhi on TV." While I was in the shower, and <laughs> she be she be like, uh, "Who's Delhi?" And I said, "She's an influencer I follow on Facebook." <laughs> Welcome home, mommy. Thank Watching you. you talk on TV about the same things you tell us on Facebook hits differently. Oh, I'm happy to Keep doing to hear what that. you do. We love uh, we love you. Thank Karen you. A uh, Tambendek is writing from uh, Limbe. Good evening to you, uh, Karen. Uh, wow, Delhi singer. Thank you for hitting the nail straight, we must learn to appreciate our product, promote what is ours, and practice our culture to portray its values, without which no stranger will come to project it for us. You are being so realistic, and I admire that threat. Some people think uh, being modern is uh, being westernized. Not at all. Being real is uh, no sign of being uncivilized, as some people think. Mm -hmm. In fact, Delhi Singer, please let me bring over more speakers for you to sound uh, the message <laughs> loud enough for it uh, <laughs> to go far and wide. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, thank you very much. Uh, unfortunately, we have to stop yeah, here. Yeah. Uh, Delhi, thank you for coming. I appreciate you all. Thank you so much, Mr. Kum. It's really a pre pleasure and an honor to, to I mean, sit alongside you mm. in the studio. Yes, I'm in Cameroon. I'll be leaving. And I just want to thank you all again for the support and every other thing. Um, I've gotten to levels where I could not, I could only sit and watch on TV. You know, I could never imagine. But God has taken us this far. And my prayer, my biggest prayer is I should keep on doing that which I'm I've been called to do. And while you, those of you listening, please do not just listen to me. Do not just hear me. Listen and also practice the things, and it's going to take you far. Thank you all for watching this special edition of uh, Prime R. We're going to be live again at 7 p.m. for our usual Friday editions of Prime R. Stay blessed. Bye-bye. Welcome to a new world of TV broadcasting, My Major Prime.